Topic five, derivatives. Derivatives are a special type of financial instrument. Each derivative is a financial instrument. However, their underlying assets may or may not be. In order to be classified as a derivative, this instrument needs to have all of the following criterion satisfied. Its value must be derived from the value of some underlying asset, oftentimes a stock, require little to no upfront cost, and be settled at a time in the future. The common derivatives that we are going to be looking at for this chapter are options, forward contracts, and futures contracts. Again, friendly reminder that derivatives themselves are financial instruments, but their underlying assets may or may not be. Share-based payments to non-employees um, are a form of derivative. The options allow the holder of a right, but not the obligation, to buy or sell something at a future point in time at some predetermined price. A forward contract is an obligation to buy or sell something at some future point in time at some predetermined price. A futures contract is very similar to a forward, but the futures contract can be actively traded on a stock exchange. There are other forms of derivatives, uh, many other forms, an unlimited form of derivatives, and they can oftentimes be more complex and are come into existence through a process of financial engineering, which is outside the scope of this course. In this course, we are concerned for the accounting for derivatives. A company must recognize derivatives on the balance sheet when the company enters into the derivatives contract, so upon inception. These derivatives must be recognized at fair value on the day that they enter into the contract, as well as remeasure for that fair value of those derivatives at each reporting date. Any gains or losses from this remeasurement will be included in income for the period. Fair value through profit and loss. Let's look at an example. JBC agrees to a forward contract to buy 2,000 shares of Acme Limited for $15 a share in 30 days. The current market value of the shares are $15 each. The forward contract has no cost. After 10 days, on JBC's balance sheet date, shares of Acme are trading for $19 each. In 30 days, when JBC buys the shares, they are worth $17 each. On the day the contract is entered into, as the contract itself has no costs, we make a memo entry. We agree to purchase 2,000 shares of Acme for $15 per share in 30 days. On the balance sheet date, we remeasure the derivatives and recognize a gain or a loss. There is a gain because we, um, because the value was 15 and, and then the, on purchase, and now is 15, and now is $19. So the difference is $4 times 2,000 shares, which is a gain of 8,000. Uh, it's a gain, so it makes the financial, pardon me, the forward uh, financial instrument go up. So it's a debit on our balance sheet, and the gain goes through the profit and loss statement as a credit. Then, when we actually purchase the shares, the fair value has decreased. So we need to adjust for that loss, and then in a separate entry right below, record the purchase of the shares at the same time. So the loss of the derivatives is represented by what the value is on the time of the share purchase, which is the difference um, between what we recorded on the last uh, financial statement date and what it's currently worth, times 2,000. So we would decrease the value of the forward instrument by the 4,000. And then we need to represent the fact that we are actually purchasing the shares, so we must 
remove the remaining amount of the derivative instrument, which was um, originally zero, and then 8,000 on the first <laughs> balance sheet date, and written down by 4,000 on the time that we purchased. And so we have to write off the remaining 4,000 um, to represent the fact that we are in fact buying the shares and there is the cash for the value of the shares on the on the pardon me uh, forward contract date. So now we have our investment in Acme shares for our seventeen dollars per share, which is the value um, on the purchase date times by the two thousand. Let's look at another question. JBC Corp agrees to a forward contract to buy 100 shares of AAA Limited for $3 a share in 90 days. It is currently one month to the balance sheet date for JBC Corp. The current market value of the shares is $3. The forward contract has no cost. After 30 days, shares of AAA or AAA are trading for $8 each. In 90 days, when the transaction is executed, shares were trading for $18. What amount of gain or loss will be recognized at the balance sheet date? Is it A, just a memo entry, B, 500, C, 800, D, 1500? If you said B, 500, you would be correct. And that's because shares have appreciated in value by $5. That is a difference of the forward contract price of $3 per share. And after 30 days on the balance sheet date, the $8 per share each. So it's a one month to the balance sheet date. In the, that one month, in that 30 dates, days, they're worth $8 each. Eight minus three is five. So five times the 100 shares equals $500. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next chapter.